Ladies and gentlemen, well, mainly gentlemen, welcome to the Rochette Kitchen. Today, finally, is going to be a build video, or at least a rebuild video, focusing on our very own heated pass. So, this is the heat lamps where the food is kept warm during preparation. Then we can serve on this particular model about six dishes at once for a table of six that may be dining in the brew shed. So, it's a very simple unit which consists of heat lamps. So, there are, if it'll focus, six heat lamps. Obviously, one pretty much for each dish zone, but uh, you, <laughs> it's not actually per dish if you know where I'm coming from. It's just a spread of heat. And uh, they are riveted into a little gantry, a stainless steel gantry type thing. So you can set three meals under the bottom, three meals on the top. And there's also a little bit of radiant heat that comes off the top as well. So if you want to just keep something kind of tepid but not hot, just for that brief moment, it can go on the top. But generally it's just used to put serving bowls and stuff on top. And the whole shebang, excuse the noise of that freezer, it's got a very, very high duty cycle. Um, the whole shebang is run off of this little controller, which I've also incorporated a um, plug with a 30 milliamp RCD on there as well, so that the chef can plug in his food mixer or whatever else. Um, I don't know how much they use it. There's plug sockets there. But I just thought it would be convenient seeing as well, it's doable. So, heat lamp on. And then we've got this little rear stat here. Which controls the intensity of the lights. And on our switch, panel indicator. The whole thing grounded, earthed through this double sheet um, armoured cable and then we've just got uh, double insulated wires running up into the lamp bodies to provide power there. So we're going to have to replace this thing because it's cracked on the top and we think that's mainly due to heat damage from the rear start here. So I'm going to take the whole thing to pieces today and we're going to replace the box and we're going to remount a brand new one. So let's open this sucker up. So inside we've got power coming in which I've just isolated. That goes into these little distribution blocks here and then we send 240 volts straight into the back of the switch, uh, the plug socket. 240 volts go into the rear stat via, uh, I'm calling that a rear stat, it's a potentiometer, uh, via the on and off switch, which also illuminates the on and off panel indicator. And then the output from this sucker goes out via these cables here and feeds the lamps proper. So that's what she looks like. Let's get her off. A couple of screws in the back from this side I've got to undo and then the whole shebang should come down and we can just disconnect and take away to the workshop to retrofit. So I purchased a considerably larger box sailor from um, eBay I think it was. They were, whoa, what was this, about five, seven pounds or something like that. It was from this chap, BM, eBay shop, Ballycastle Road. So BM, Electrical Wholesalers Limited. And it seems like a fairly decent type of enclosure. I like these particular enclosures because you don't have to take the whole of the lid off to access them so if you're working for instance 
um, servicing something and you've got fittings on the front of the enclosure and also mounted inside what I like about these boxes I use them for the fermenter controllers is you can just pull the um, whole thing forwards and the lid hinges it's got like a little hinge mechanism on the back if you don't wind those screws all the way out which is convenient and then also this is an improvement on the last one the screws are also captive they didn't used to be but on this instance we're going to be taking them all the way out so we can cut into the panel so let's take the front off of this bad boy as well and what we're basically going to have to do is remove all of the fittings on the inside and transfer them across here one thing I noticed straight off the bat is we don't have any mounting points for this little buzz bar but that shouldn't be a huge problem um, I'll just pull it off and we can probably find somewhere for it to screw into at any who there are some screw holes in the base of this particular model and I wonder if by magic no they don't they don't line up software in it oh well we could still use that though I mean it can just sit in there and float around as is it's as good as a set of chocolate blockages but for now I'll probably just take these cables out and we'll revisit this a little bit later in the build so one of the first things I'm going to have to do is cut some holes in the panel oh, that was tight I didn't want them coming undone did I uh, yeah cut some holes in the panel for the indicator the fittings and everything else which should be fairly easy I've put a couple of screws in that socket and I also remember when I put the socket in just get a screwdriver I had to cut it to fit the shape of this box now this was the only box I could get at the time I think it was from Screwfix it was quite expensive for what it is and it obviously didn't last it's the Schneider one I believe so I wouldn't buy it again uh, I don't know why they made the front of them sleek and curved either I mean it doesn't really add any aesthetics to the thing if anything it just makes it awkward to mount anything on the outside of the enclosure so uh, points deducted in that respect so here we go we're in so if I just disconnect the supply cables that wasn't very tight at all to and the earth and remove that and there we have it so this was was a good little switch we'll use this again as you can see I've cut like a slight curve on the back of it here but what I'll probably do now is just I'll square that all up so it sits flush again shouldn't be a problem uh, but yeah it's convenient because that means that when the guys are using uh, stick blenders or something like that they've got this everything in the pub by the way is RCD protected that is uh, user facing so everything apart from the lights for instance um, has a RCBO in the circuit board but this is just that added extra protection a little bit closer to the user so if this trips off they don't have to run downstairs it doesn't knock off the power sockets off 
It might do. I'm, I don't know. The RCBO downstairs might catch it quicker than this, but you can't have too many points of safety. So that's that. So we've got to straighten that out a bit, cut a hole for it, no problemo. And then in the back here, we'll remove the knob, like so. And then I need a spanner. Or some pliers. Just to give that nut a twizzle. And then for the power doodad, we just need a hole. So this is very simple, kind of. I can't remember where I bought this from. Um, probably eBay, but I bought it for cheese making. I was going to make, um, I had a heating, a very low power heating element, and I wanted to hook it up to this. So it's like a 5,000 watt, probably not though, um, power supply controller. It basically just works by chopping up the current, I believe, um, with in there is a little. Um, triac or something like that and uh, we've got this little power gauge like rear potentiometer on the front and uh, yeah so you've got 240 volts in and then it'll be chopping up chopping up the voltage or whatever on the way out to reduce the power being consumed by something and then that runs to a switch here which I may as well take the panel indicator out and while I'm at it I'm probably going to change this for a brighter one because we did have an issue with one of the chefs leaving this on overnight which wasn't the best move so if I've got a brighter panel indicator, I'll change that out. And then finally, we've got quite a beefy on-off switch here, which takes care of the switching of the main current in. So this should twist off. I'm going to damage it. It wants to come. Anyway, I'll fiddle with this and we'll come back when I've got the new layout. All kind of... Uh, Lay down, frick sakes. So I've begun to line everything up how we want it to be displayed. Light, the dial, you know, there kind of thing. Plug, there. And uh, that's it, lamp's going to go that side. And then switch that side. And then... Um, I thought, well, the reason the box failed in the first instance was because it was too hot from the potentiometer thing. I'm, I'm sure I'm calling it the wrong thing. So, on the inside, that's where the old potentiometer is going to live, any road. Up, be connected to the front. So I've installed in here a little 12 volt, 2 amp uh, power supply which will run off the uh, mains and that will control 12 volts to a little fan yeah so we're going to plug that little fan down the bottom here cut a little hole for it and we'll stick like that bad boy on there as well keep fingers out and that should give us a little bit of circulation of the air inside and help keep the whole thing a little bit cooler, I guess. 
So uh, I just need to cut some holes now. Right, I've marked out where I want things to go, and I'm going to see if I can use this Erbauer um, multi-tool kind of side cutter motherfucker, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> oh, it's a good job I've not plugged it in yet because I'm changing the blade and I've just flicked it on. There we go. Idiot mode activated. So I'm just putting a bit of angle on the blade like that. Make sure it's off. See if we can uh, get through. Well, apart from it being very noisy, I do think it's the right tool for the job. It's worked really well. Better than trying to cut it out with an angle grinder, which I did on the last one. You can see that's my last attempt. So let's see if this fits in. I've done it purposely too small because I was worried about the screw holes not lining up. So just a little nip on these edges. Maybe if I tidy it up with a knife it might fit. So let's just do that. I seem to be doing what I do well and that is making a mess of my workbench. So I'll just pile it some holes. Widen them up to four mil. Just like that. You can see I've cut out the section for the socket. Oh. And then for the potentiometer, for the potentiometer, we need a 10 mil. So there we go, straight into the self-healing mat, which doesn't self-heal, what? Does that fit? 10 mil hole, perfect fetish. Right then, and then we need 22 mil holes for these, for these sections here, so we're going to use the step bit. Oh, that's nice and sharp, isn't it? Oh, I went through like butter. Let me see if that fits. No, I thought it had to go all the way through to get the right size. There we go. Same with this one. Beautiful, I'm pleased I got that step bit. I bought a new one because uh, I'd ruined my old one. Drilling stainless steel with it, of course. So, let's start to put this together. I think first things first, we'll insert the plugs. And around here somewhere, I should have some screws. And, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> and some nuts. So we'll screw them on there like so. 
I'm going to end up dropping something on the floor, I can see it. Let's just put this around here. Pop this one through this side. That into there. And then if I just change the end on this screwdriver, I'll tighten these up. Now I do want to put some silicon around the edge of this, so I'm just going to tighten it up so it doesn't move around on me, but I'll probably take that back off again shortly. Now the on and off switch, I want that side and the back plate, we have this little rubber back plate thing that goes on and then this kind of, well that's it, this twists on there, got to get it lined up correctly, on off on off there we go and again just want to tighten that up so it doesn't go flying anywhere that'll do for now just a, like I say just a loose fitting and I've just got to pull these two cables out of here in order to slide that bad boy through the middle there we go action shot we've got Sam and Stu moving some beer outside by the looks of things so it's a working brewery folks Right then, and then um, the pot, as it's called. So what I want to do is shove it in. Oh, it all fits nicely. Stick that little bit on there, and then thread the nut on top of the washer. And then just tighten it up. And there she goes, got a new face plate and everything installed in the back nice and neatly. I'm going to struggle to get to the screws for that so I'll probably have to do this wiring first while this is removed and then shove it back in, whatever's easiest. But yeah, just need to wire the whole shebang up now I think. Would you just look at that little beauty? So it's all connected up and inside you see these two ends are the output for the heat lamps and that's the earth that needs to connect to the earth on the main cable and then I managed to find a couple of little uh, bus bars and I just need to connect the main power up to those bus bars and I also installed the 12 volt power supply which is coupled into the on off switch on here so when the power's on for the heat lamps the power's on for the power supply which will rotate our little cooling fan which I've installed doing the bottom there like laddie so we just need to make five connections in the kitchen and before we go I'm just going to print off some little labels with my brother, label printer. So we just need to do the next label, says heat lamp and then power and print. Oh no! We're coming to the end of the strip. Oh, ain't that shit? Why do they do that? I could have got some more stickers out of that. 
Battery empty. Oh well. That didn't work out as I wanted it to. So, this cassette is empty, not the batteries. Have I got another one of these? I don't know. But I'll not be doing that today then. What an absolute shyster. Fancy that happening. Just at the moment I wanted to show off how good this little piece of kit is, it's let me down. But what we can do is just put the stickers on that we have printed. So the power for the lamp. I've printed this the correct way around this time because apparently I printed it um, on off instead of off on the last time I did this. Doesn't make any difference, it's just uh, to indicate what the bits and bobs do, to be fair. Doesn't. If you can't figure it out for yourself, then you shouldn't be using it really, should you? There we have it. So I'm going to take it next door and we're going to install it. The pub is open though, so uh, I'll just have to bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Pretty cool piece of kit. And uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to put together a schematic for it. If you don't know how to wire something like this up, don't build it. But it looks relatively simple, and all the components individually uh, kind of speak for themselves. One thing I am going to do though is just uh, glue this cable down here because I ran out of sticky pads. I did want some sticky pads to pin all the wires down inside but uh, yeah unfortunately ran out of them. So that's not going to happen. And that's not going to cool quick enough either for me to let go of it. Come on, you bugger. It's pretty cold in here, so this really should be setting a bit faster than it actually is. There we go. And then the same down here. Just a wee blob. A wee blob of hot melt. And there we go. I'll just stand here till this cools and then we'll go and install. We're actually a couple of days later. Oh, perfect timing. And we've got the box installed. I waited till there were no staff in here and customers so it's a little bit easier for me to film. So, box installed on the, uh, on the pass. Earthed. Supply cable, everything in. That's plugged in over there in the wall. So heat lamp on, as you can see the indicator comes on there and we can see that she's working nicely. So we'll turn the heat lamp back off again and then the final thing to test is of course the safety socket. So that's working and then if we press the test button Is it going to let me? There we go. No power. Reset. Beautiful. So we now have heat lamp, brand new control box with added ventilation. All important. Nice work, folks. Catch you on the next one.